So yesterday we pushed up to the channel Atlas versus Warhammer. And uh, we looked at ideal tactics in terms of if these two classic mechs had to go head-to-head, toe-to-toe, how could the Warhammer do it? How could we get it where Battletech being awesome, Battletech being Battletech, how could we get it, you know, six out of seven times the Warhammer could win? Never tell me the odds, but those are pretty good odds with a heavy mech versus an assault mech. So we, we talked about that, pushed that up to the Battletech playlist here on the channel. Let's, let's go head-to-head, light-to-light. Something a little more fair, although we don't want ever want it to be fair in warfare, but something a little bit more two scouts kind of seeing what happens. Let's look at the spider because it's a favorite machine of mine. And let's look at the wasp because certainly in numerous wasps have been produced. And it's interesting to see the various bug mechs and how they kind of go head to head. So with weapons, weapons and speed. Now the spider is a little quicker. Both have jump jets. But the spider is not, compared to the wasp, or I should say the wasp compared to the spider, the speed being close enough means both are going to be able to choose to engage or not engage. We see this with the Atlas versus the Warhammer. Ideally, the Warhammer wants to stay at range, blasting away with those PPCs. And in doing that, to bring those to bear, if it's backpedaling, the speed is cut down tremendously because you can only walk, you can't run. That means the Atlas is going to close. Those medium lasers, that AC-20 is going to be brought to bear. We don't really see this, not so much in terms of weapons because these are light mechs. What do they really carry? But the speed and the mobility of the jump jets means it's going to be a lot of back and forth. So then we look at being able to tag, being able to actually land a hit. And it could be multiple turns of dancing around landing hits not landing hits. In this case, the spider has a slight advantage. But I would argue only really at range. And with that slight advantage at range, what I mean by that is it's going to be a consistent five points of damage. Five and five. It's got the two medium lasers in the center torso. The wasp has that medium laser, and it's got the SRM two-pack. Those are two shots, one with fixed damage, one with damage that depends on on where and how you hit. So at range, that the spider's got a slight advantage, and it's going to go pretty quick armor on light mechs. So what that means is as soon as things go to internals, this is where the two mechs become even. I mean, imagine left torso is internal, right torso is internal on both mechs. It doesn't matter at that point what you get hit with, whether it's an SRM missile, single missile, or you're getting hit with a laser or a small laser or any other type of weapon. At that point, it's going to go to internals, and you're going to be potentially in trouble depending on locations. Advantage to the spider because it's not ammo-based. Although, on a side note, um, my play experience has shown that ammo explosions, ammo crits, while it's possible in any mech, it's less likely in light mechs because they just don't mount enough stuff. They don't have enough armor. They don't have enough internal support to really mount that. By the time you're really going to internals, you're already missing an arm, your leg's barely holding on, maybe you got an engine hit. And again, that's not to say that they don't blow up, but it's not as bad as being an assault mech or a heavy mech and it goes to internals and technically your machine is still up. Technically your machine is still running. But you get that lucky shot, and you just explode, and it's it's smoking boots. I mean, talk about sad face for my T-Bolt or my Battlemaster when that happens. Side note, that's why I also always play an awesome, because at least it's all energy-based. And you have to commit to push it to putting. You have to commit to putting that machine down. So back to this dance between the spider and the wasp. The, the spider is going to be able to potentially penetrate armor quicker based on damage. And at that point, if it can close, at that point, if it can close, it's going to have to have an advantage. It's going to have an advantage because the wasp will still have to potentially chew through the spider's armor. But I feel like at this point, between these two mechs, and, you know, of course, you can make physical attacks. um, Death from above, that's a possibility too. Those kind of outliers for battle tech, although less likely because these two light mechs can decide to stay and dance i find what it's going to come down to at this point slight advantage agree or disagree in the comments slight material advantage to the spider absolutely 
But more than anything, it's going to come down to literally mech warrior skill. Mech facing, mech mobility, and the ability to navigate terrain and hexes. Gaining an advantage one or two turns where maybe you can fire on the other mech, but they can't fire on you. What's going to be big, and this is head-to-head, we're assuming right now no other pieces in play. Initiative. Who's winning initiative? Who's losing initiative? And in one-on-one mech duels, initiative is vital. And being able to account for, sometimes gambling, if I win initiative this turn, am I in a position where I play conservative so I can get some shots in, maybe not the best, but I can get something in, but then next turn if I lose initiative... I won't be overexposed. Or do you say, or do you say, and I do this tabletop glory, you're like, Fritz, that's an awful move, right? But but the chance for glory is there. One-on-one, you win initiative. Do you move forward to gain a superior position, being able to fire after they move? But then next turn, if you lose initiative and they move before you do, you're in a lot of trouble. So I find, I, I think with the spider versus wasp, this is what it's really, really going to focus on, the, the skill of the individual in navigating the hexes.